Hi, this is Marcy and David Lynn. After living aboard our sailboat, Nine of Cups, for 18 years, we've moved to shore and begun converting our Ford Transit 250 van into a camper. His name is Blue, by the way. We're trying to document as much of the van conversion process as possible. In this video, David will show you how he installed a battery under the front passenger seat. I was reading some of the transit upfitting forums and there were a few references and questions about stowing house batteries under the front passenger seat. I didn't come across any that had successfully done it or any that indicated that it couldn't be done, so I thought I'd see whether or not it was feasible. In our 2015 transit, there's room under the seat for two Group 31 batteries with a couple of caveats. The jack must be removed and stowed somewhere else, which shouldn't be all that difficult. But the real problem is that there's some sort of a computer module attached to the left-hand side of the seat support. It's connected to a thick multi-conductor cable that comes up through the floor. I think it might be possible to relocate the cable and the module, but I was worried that it might void the warranty. I decided to leave it in place. There's still room for one battery alongside the computer module as long as I relocate the jack. Relocating the jack was surprisingly easy. Once the jack is removed from its bracket, the bracket can be unscrewed from the floor and bolted to the rear seat support. In this new location, I think it's actually easier to access than it was originally. The first step is to remove the front passenger seat. Start by sliding the seat all the way back and removing the two plastic covers over the screw heads. There are two screws in front that require a number 40 Torx bit. Once these are removed, slide the seat all the way forward and remove the two screws under the rear of the seat. Next, remove the jack and its retaining strap. The bracket is held in place with two bolts. Remove the two nuts with a 10 millimeter wrench and the bracket can be lifted out. I've already marked the new mounting holes for the bracket and I've drilled pilot holes. Now I need to drill them out with a 3 8 inch bit for the riv nuts. Now that the holes are drilled, I'll insert the riv nuts. If you don't know how to do this, I have another video on our website, www.justalittlefurther.com, that shows how to install riv nuts. Before I screw the bracket into its new location, I'll apply some small strips of double-sided VHB tape. This will ensure that the bracket never vibrates loose. Then I attach the bracket using two 1 quarter 20 pan head screws.
the bolts that used to hold the bracket are now in the way of the battery. So I used a Ryobi multi-tool with a cutoff wheel to cut the bolts off flush. In retrospect, if I were doing this again, I would have used a piece of wood or cardboard to shield the wiring from the sparks, but I didn't see any damage when I inspected it later. The bracket I'm using to secure the battery in place is a steel 8-inch strap used for framing a house. It's available at Home Depot or Lowe's for about 75 cents. I've marked the outline of the battery and removed it. Next, I'll mark the spots to drill the bracket mounting holes. Before I drilled anything, I checked underneath to see what I'll be drilling into. The two holes closest to the door go into the small compartment that holds the tire and jack tools. The other two holes are in an area that has nothing underneath. I've drilled pilot holes at the marked locations. I checked once again to make sure that I hadn't drilled into anything, then I drilled the holes out to 3 8 inch for the installation of the rib nuts. I've installed the rib nuts and I'll be using 1 quarter 20 threaded stock to hold the brackets in place. I've cut four sections from a 48 inch length of threaded rod. One end will screw into the rib nut and be locked in place with a nut. The other end will extend up and hold the ends of the battery brackets in place. battery is back in place and I'll secure it with the battery straps. I'm using a flat washer, a lock washer, and a nut on each stud to secure the bracket. Despite the fact that I measured everything 27 times, I still had an issue with the height of the battery. I discovered that it interferes with the seat slide mechanism. My solution was to raise the height of the seat 3 eighths of an inch using aluminum stock. I've cut two lengths to size and drilled two holes in each to match the bolt pattern in the seat support. I've attached VHB tape to the seat support to hold the aluminum in place until the seat is bolted back down. I bolted them down temporarily until I was ready to reinstall the seat to make sure the VHB tape had a chance to set up. The bolts that held the seat down were not long enough after adding the aluminum strips, so I replaced them with longer bolts, which I found at a local Lowe's store. This is how it looked with all the cables connected. There was just one more teeny tiny complication, however. After I hooked up the cables and put the seat back in, I discovered that the negative terminal was just slightly too high and the seat wouldn't slide all the way forward. To get around this, I fabricated an aluminum bracket that bolted onto the negative terminal and allowed me to connect the negative battery cable to the side of the battery. The bracket had to be beefy enough to carry the maximum battery current. I used a short section of quarter inch aluminum one inch wide. 
This has a current carrying capacity of 308 amps. Since the batteries are fused with a 150 amp fuse, the bracket should be more than adequate. Finally, to make sure I wouldn't have a problem with chafe, I installed some chafe guards on the cables where they pass through the hole in the back of the seat support. We hope you enjoyed this video. You can find more how-to and travel videos on our blog site at www.justalittlefurther.com.